Lord, from sorrows deep I call When my hope is shaken Torn and ruined from the fall Hear my desperation For so long I've pled and prayed God, come to my rescue Even so the thorn Troubled soul, questions without answers. On my faith, these pillows roll. God, be now my shelter. Why are you cast down my soul? Hope in Him who saves you when the fires have all. This heart to praise you. Should my life be torn from me, every worldly pleasure. Grief, God be in my treasure, and be my vision in the night, be my hope and refuge till my face is turned to side. The Lord, my heart will pray. as we visit online only today because of uh, the protocols that we have in place. But next week, we hope to be in God's house again, gathered to hear his word uh, as we meet at the, the normal times next week, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and, uh, and 11. More information can be found on our, our website and social media pages and, and uh, um, by calling up uh, pastor or one of our members. But uh, may God be with you today uh, as we gather in this way, uh, and we hear about the, the good news that Jesus has for us, the good news that our Lord provides for our bodies and our souls. Jesus comes in a powerful way with this simple message to give us peace and comfort that satisfies today, and may God bless you with that message. We'll be following the order of service that is provided for you in the worship slides. Please follow along uh, as we thank our God and and bring our requests before him as we worship our Lord today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, 
and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. We hear the prayer of the day. O God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In a world that so often frustrates and leaves us unsatisfied, God invites us to, to hear his word, to, to come and receive the, the living water and the, the, the bread from heaven that he gives to us that, that truly satisfies us, that gives us a, a peace that surpasses understanding. We hear these wonderful words from Isaiah chapter 55. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. This is the word of our Lord. Hear now the verse of the day. Alleluia, Jesus replied. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. How great is the love of God that he gives us his word that satisfies our souls, that gives us life and life everlasting. And these gifts of God are, are so great and so overwhelming that no matter what we face in this life, uh, God's promises um, cannot be hindered. Um, who shall separate us from the love of God? What shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing. Uh, we are more than conquerors in, in our Lord and in the message that he gives to us. We read from Romans and hear this wonderful gospel message given to us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We sing together. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These words are written that we may believe 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We hear now the words of our gospel lesson for today from Matthew chapter 14. These words will serve as our sermon text and is the wonderful account of Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus the women and the children who were gathered there. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We hear now and sing our hymn, O Lord our God, your gracious hand.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for today is Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. That gospel lesson that we heard, that recounting of the, the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 plus 5,000 men and women and children gathered before Jesus on that day. Dear friends in Christ, how is this going to work? They were in a remote place. It was already getting late, and there was 5,000 men plus women and children who were all gathered there. They had come from near and far. They had come to see Jesus, to spend time with him, to bring their sick to him. And Jesus wanted to spend time with them. And so, as Jesus would often do, he would spend time teaching about the kingdom of God. He would spend time with people showing love and compassion. But as the day slipped into the evening hours, the concern of the disciples grew as they saw this obstacle that seemed to be piling up against them. And so they came to Jesus and they expressed their concern. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and, and buy themselves some food. But much to the disciples' surprise, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. Jesus wanted to spend time with these crowds that he had compassion on. Jesus wanted to spend more time with these people, even though he had gone to this remote place for a rather personal reason. He had gone to mourn the, the death of John the Baptist, but now that the crowds had come, he had turned to them and, and had compassion on them as he cared for them, as he cared for their spiritual needs, as he cared for them as people. And, and so in the, his great compassion, he healed many sick among them. And, and now evening, as evening approached, he, he wanted them to remain because chiefly he, he wanted to care for them, especially their spiritual needs. He wanted to teach and, and preach to them. He wanted to share the good news of the, the kingdom of God with them and, and show God's love and kindness with limited interruption and ongoing connection. Have them stay and Jesus would find a way. But how? That's the, dis the disciples were struggling with that question over and over again. How, how is that going to work? That was the obstacle that the disciples were getting tripped up on. The, the logistics of all of this was just overwhelming and so we See that the disciples decided to frankly take the more practical, perhaps the easier route to send everybody away. And so they came to Jesus with a list of excuses to opt out of this difficult, this mounting, this, oh, this impossible looking situation. This is a, a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the, the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and, and buy themselves some food. Now, all in all, their, their plan appeared to be a bit thoughtful, but was it really that considerate of the needs of others? Or were the disciples just selfishly trying to avoid being backed into a, a difficult corner, a uh, difficult situation that they didn't want to, to deal with? I would venture to say that they were underestimating the, the, even the physical needs of, of these people 5,000 plus people gathered in this space with the nearby towns and villages even have enough for them to, to, to eat and, and to, to buy food from. I'm not sure they were really understanding how much was going on here. And, and they were certainly overlooking the, the spiritual needs of these people as well. On top of all that, they were overlooking the fact that Jesus was standing with them. These people needed to be with Jesus. They needed to hear Jesus preach and teach. They had great benefit of being in his presence and seeing his love and compassion. They didn't just need food or get up, to get out of there to, to get sustenance, but they needed spiritual sustenance and Jesus could provide for them, for their bodies and their souls. And Jesus was more than willing uh, to provide for them in such a way. And so Jesus comes up with this alternate 
alternative plan that, that reflects his power, his goodness, his grace, his love, and his compassion. He would supply for their bodies and souls in a, in a way that was unforgettable, in a way that, that uh, would stand out for all time to, to show that God cares for the, the needs of, of people. And by doing this, he would serve up some spiritual nourishment that would truly satisfy as well. In his great power and his great compassion, Jesus did the impossible and, and provided both for their spiritual and physical needs. And the, the people sat down and they were satisfied in his presence. What a scene that must have been. Dear friends, the last few months, we have seen a lot of situations that have probably made us wonder, how is this going to work? How is this going to work to worship online? How is this going to work And when we have opportunity to come back together and worship with different health care protocols and procedures? How are we going to look out for the physical well-being of our members as we also uh, tend to their spiritual needs and to reach out to the spiritual needs of the community. And these are, are difficult questions, and it can seem like we're crowded by overwhelming circumstances, and there is this temptation to just take the easiest route. Let's just send all those problems away. Let's take a break from it, hope for the best, and, and, uh, and maybe things will take care of themselves in time. As a church, in these situations, it might seem hard, hard to plan. As individuals, it might seem easier to just take a break and, and quit church and, and, and perhaps even quit tending to our spiritual needs, at, at least for a while, because there's more pressing physical needs that are, need to be attended to. But notice how Jesus responds when there's this dilemma place before him of, of physical versus spiritual needs. He says, nah, let's, let's take care of both. I can do that. So gracious and compassionate and caring is our Savior and our Lord. He teaches us this wonderful lesson in this vivid way. He cares for our bodies and for our souls. The Lord Jesus was going to take care of the physical and the spiritual needs of, of the people in this miraculous, unforgettable way. He was about to do it in a way that would teach people still today that we can trust in him to provide for us. Even in difficult, even in overwhelming, even in what seems like insurmountable and impossible looking situations, Jesus will take care of you and me. And we see that here as Jesus was going to, to feed 5,000 plus people. And, and what would he use? A small offering of two fish and, and five loaves of bread. Jesus would take that. And Jesus would, would take this gift and he would graciously provide for this immense crowd so that they would all be satisfied and that there would be food to spare. I hear these wonderful words of scripture again from Matthew chapter 14 taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he gave thanks and broke the loaves he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people they all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over so richly God provided for the, the needs of the people. So richly the Lord provides even in impossible and overwhelming looking situations. So richly God provides for he is our Lord who cares for our bodies and our souls. And he cares still today. That's good to know. And that's a lesson that we... We ought to relearn and we are glad to relearn for in these trying times and these difficult times and these times when life's troubles seem so overwhelming and insurmountable as they crowd around us, let's not forget how God can do some rather remarkable things. The God who fed the 5,000 plus with just a small offering of fish and loaves will be with us as we face the current set of circumstances 
needs of both body and soul. Don't just sneak up on Jesus or take him by surprise like it sometimes does for us. No, needs of body and soul that we have are perfectly known always by Jesus. And he cares for us. And we trust our God that he will take care of us in all of our ways. Are you overwhelmed by all the questions uh, that are, are crowding around, are swirling around uh, in these days and weeks and months about how you're going to stay safe and healthy in the midst of a pandemic of global proportions? The, the obstacles and, and worries of work and, and making ends meet pile up and, and crowd around you in this insurmountable way, it seems. Are you a, a parent or a grandparent who is wondering how school is going to, to work this year? What if they're going to have to do distance learning again? How, how can we handle that? Are you a, a student, a young person who, who has anxieties about going back to school and, and, and how this is all going to, to play out? Know that Jesus is near. And he cares. The Son of God, the Lord of heaven and earth is with you. And he cares and he speaks to you in his word. And listen to his word and, and know that he will supply for your needs. He gives you his living water that refreshes, his bread of life that sustains us in difficult times. Are you a member of a church who is wondering how church is going to keep going, how Sunday school is, is going to function, how we are going to care for the, the spiritual needs of our, our members and our, our community by, and, also, and also watch out for their physical well-being? With all these questions crowding around us, remember that the Lord Jesus is with us and he cares. And he will provide for our needs. Bring all these issues, bring all these anxieties to Jesus because he cares for you. Bring all your problems, bring, all, bring everything, all your guilt, all your, your shame, your sins of frustration and pride and, and hate and, and anger that boil up, especially in these tense moments, and, and bring it all to the one who overcomes. The one who overcomes with his overwhelming grace, for he will provide. He will provide for our bodies. He will provide for our souls. He will care for us with his overwhelming love. For the Savior who fed 5,000 plus with just a small offering of food loved you so much that he would offer his own life for you as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world so that you could be with him for all time, so that you could be with your Father in heaven the endless heavenly banquets. God gave his son for you so that he would die and rise and live again so that wonderful gift would be yours. And if God did not spare his own son but graciously gave him up for us all, will he not also graciously provide us with all that we need? And in his word, he tells us that nothing, nothing in this world, no illness, no trouble, no obstacle, no matter how big, no matter how gigantic, is so great that it can keep us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing shall separate us from that love of God that is so generously given and freely given in Jesus Christ. Jesus cares for us in our bodies and souls. And, may he, and he may even bless us all the more as we engage in the wondrous work that he places before us, as he lays out in front of us. Remember a unique aspect of this feeding of the 5,000. Look at how Jesus includes those around him. Look at how he welcomes this young boy and involves his, his disciples and how this miracle is carried out. The boy has a, a small has a, a gift to give and an opportunity to give those loaves and fish and God blesses it so incredibly no matter how small the gift was. Look at how Jesus brings his disciples back from pushing the problem away and instead he engages them 
in an effort to participate. Imperfect and even reluctant though they be, God uses them, involves them in carrying out this wondrous work. Jesus, of course, is solely responsible for this wonderful miracle, but he carries it out in such a way that he serves, it serves to be a blessing for those who serve according to the calling that he has given them. You give them something to eat, he says to his disciples. He welcomes that offering brought forward by a young boy compelled by the compassion he saw in Jesus. He enlists the disciples to distribute the, the food and to collect the leftovers. Jesus performs this miraculous act of feeding the 5,000 plus, and he actively involves those near so that they would always know and know by experience how Jesus provides so compassionately, so generously, so graciously for our need of body and soul. This is who your Lord is. And so, dear friends, remember that Jesus is with you. Remember that Jesus provides for our bodies and souls, and remember that he may also enlist us into service in a way that maybe we did not expect. I think we have a tendency, like those disciples, when there is a, a big obstacle of place before us, we have this tendency to say, well, maybe somebody else can do it. Uh, we shrink away from, from that which seems too overwhelming. Uh, not because we don't care, but we have this selfish attitude that we don't want to fail or it might be too hard for us. Like the disciples, we have that, that tendency to, to shrink back, but, but Jesus calls us to step forward. Because we know and we can do that in confidence because we know the, the care and, and power that he has and how he is with us. As we face the challenges of our, our current situation, consider how God may use you to distribute his blessings. Can you share some of your extra food to care for a neighbor or a, a neighbor family? Can you call up a, a friend and check to see if they are watching church online? And if not, can you teach them how to use their computer, their phone, or their TV to tune on so that they can continue to be fed spiritually? Can you, as a, a young parent, work with your pastor and Sunday school teachers to arrange for a plan where the, the kids can come back safely and, and continue in their Christian education? Or, or can you work with the Sunday school teachers and the pastor to take those lessons home and, and teach them to your children. Ask your pastor or your parents for, for tips about starting a family devotion routine. And as you get involved in feeding your family spiritually, this will be a, a blessing to both you and, and your entire household. God can use this and, and bring unexpected blessings according to his gracious power. Last week, we were reminded that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Can we see that here? Can we see how he might be at, at work in these difficult situations to bring about unexpected blessings? As we sit at the feet of the powerful and compassionate Savior, we know we have a God who, who cares for us and it enables us and calls us into service. And so today, learn this important lesson once more. He cares for you. He will provide for your bodies and your souls. And perhaps he will use this current set of circumstances for the good of his church. As God's people are enlisted in, in deeds of service that we're not maybe a, 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 that used to. Maybe it's a, a bit different or unexpected. But God may bless it. May God bless parents as they are compelled uh, by, by this situation and by the love of their Savior to be more involved with their kids' education and, and their spiritual development. May the Lord bless that. May the Lord be with his church as we are compelled by the compassion of our Lord and God and Savior to give our, our time and our resources in different ways to support the ministry and to care for our neighbors and friends in their physical and spiritual needs and to care for our, our called workers so that the love of Jesus may be proclaimed in our deeds and may be proclaimed from our, our pulpits and, and from our classrooms. And we pray that God may compel us 
by his generous and compassion. Not to dismiss the task in front of us as, as too difficult or, or too overwhelming or it would take up too much of our time. But may the one who overcomes utilize what we have to offer, what we have to give, so that his gracious work of caring for the physical and, and most importantly, the spiritual needs of many is done. May God give his people his, his, the confidence that comes from knowing of the peace of Jesus so that we may go out and do his will. May God bless his people with the wonderful lesson taught here today. Jesus, our Lord, our God, provides for our bodies and souls. So today, we, we sit at the, the feet of Jesus. Through the gift of technology, after uh, trying a, a couple of times, I guess, this morning, we have that, that gift to sit at the feet of Jesus. What a wonderful blessing that satisfies Let go of the problems of the day. Listen to his word. Bring your anxieties and your issues and your obstacles and, and lay them at the, the feet of Jesus and stay for a while. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Meditate on what you heard today. Read through the, the lessons and, and go through the, the points that, that stuck out. From the, from the sermon or the, for the service and enjoy those, those morsels that God has given you to enjoy. Receive his word, the living water, the bread of life, which truly satisfies. And before you depart in peace, the peace that, that only Jesus can bring, learn once again that your Lord, your God, your Savior, your Jesus cares for you, body, and soul. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by joining together and confessing our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. These words are printed for you on the worship slides. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bow our heads in prayer. O oh God, hear our prayer and pour out your spirit that your church may confess that Jesus is Lord to your glory. By his bitter sufferings and death, he redeemed us from all sin and now sits at the right hand of your power, having authority over all things in heaven and on earth. Lord God, give all your servants such diverse spiritual gifts as are necessary to the witness and work of your church, that we may continually grow in faith, hope, and love. May the words of our Lord Jesus be taught daily in our homes, that both parents and children may increase in the knowledge of him who is the way, the truth, and the life. Bestow your favor on all useful labor in industry and agriculture, education and science, the profession and the arts, that in their advancement your people may be prospered. Look in mercy on the sick and the hurt, 
those who sorrow or mourn the handicap and infirm, and hear their cry. Let the healthful power of your love come to them, that they may turn to you in praise and thanksgiving. Bless your holy name. Lord God, this morning we bring you special requests on behalf of our, our local schools and our Christian schools. May you be with them as they uh, start um, what might be a, a bit of a, a different school year. Lord Jesus, ascended Savior, you have commanded us to instruct the young in your saving truth. Bless the schools of our church and all other agencies through which we work together to carry out that vital task. Give wisdom to those who teach and attentive ears and eager hearts to those who learn. Grant that your word may be passed down from one generation to the next until all your lambs are safely gathered into your eternal fold. Help our children be light in the world as they go to school and as they witness their faith and how they live and what they say. May they have the courage and confidence to proclaim your name to their friends as well. Lord God, we also ask that you would watch over those affected by storms in places in Minnesota and throughout Iowa. Sovereign Lord, we bow low before you in this time of natural disaster. In your wisdom, you have permitted storms to cause pain and loss. Do not let the hearts of your people despair, but sustain and comfort them. Heal the injured, console the bereaved and afflicted, protect the helpless, and deliver all who are still in danger. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, these and all other prayers, hear us. And grant for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, in whom are hidden all the treasures of heaven. In his name we pray. Amen. Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We hear that blessing again as if spoken by God himself as we sing our final hymn, Go, My Children, with my blessing.
Lord Jesus give you the peace that comes from knowing that he cares for us. He cares for us in body and soul. Uh, we learned that in such a wonderful way in the feeding of the 5,000. May you take that lesson with you today uh, after having sat at the feet of Jesus and, and, and received this wonderful spiritual nourishment. May you be blessed uh, and be a blessing to others as, as God calls you to be. So. I uh, just want to run through a few announcements. Um, again, because of uh, some of the protocols that we have set up, we, were, um, we had to have worship only online uh, today, uh, but we plan to be back in God's house next week uh, in the regular times, 8 o'clock at Flora, 9.30 at Danube, and then 11 o'clock at uh, St. John's in Renville. Um, there is a little bit uh, of a... Um, Another wrench to our August schedule, but a good one, an um, opportunity to uh, come together and celebrate the, the fellowship that we enjoy and, and the, the, the ministry that we support uh, in the, the area. We're having a special outdoor worship service on August 30th that will include the installation of Miss Louisa Cars, our new uh, preschool teacher, and it will also kind of uh, officially confirm our tri-parish ministry and the ministry that I now serve of, of, of taking uh, care of, of shepherding uh, St. Matthew's Floor Township, St. Matthew's Danube, and St. John's in Renville uh, as a tri-parish. So that outdoor worship service is scheduled for August 30th uh, at 9.30 out at the Flora campus. Um, and so uh, we look forward to that, but again, next week, hopefully we'll be back in God's house again at the regular schedule. But because of some of the other protocols that we have set up, there might be some changes in the meeting schedules uh, for this week, so contact uh, council chairman if you're on uh, church council and, and make sure we have the, the meeting times all squared away. Uh, we're also looking for input and feedback and so we can start making plans for Sunday school and for catechism classes, for Bible classes, and things like that. We hope to have a Bible information class, a kind of a, a membership course or a review of Christian doctrine beginning in September as well, too, and we want to plan for that. Um, so we'll run through the, the rest of these announcements as we um, uh, depart here. We'll leave you with some, uh, uh, some of those uh, announcements, but you can also go online and find the worship folder for today at stmatthewsdanube.org. Uh, take a look at our social media pages as well, as we'll try to update things as they, they come about. But uh, uh, may God bless you as he, he reassures you that he, he cares for you. Uh, Jesus, our powerful Lord, our compassionate Savior, uh, takes care of your physical and spiritual needs. And so we can sit at his feet and, and enjoy uh, that uh, peace that Jesus alone can give, a peace that truly satisfies. God bless. Have a good week. Thank you.